Final Cut Pro provides for unlimited layers or streams of video content. You can use these layers to animate graphical elements, create split screen effects, and stylize with blend modes. To add a new layer of video to your project, first position the playhead where you want it added. Drag a clip from the viewer into the canvas and choose Superimpose from the edit menu. A new layer is added to your timeline with your clip positioned at the playhead. You can also drag a clip directly into the timeline to create the new layer. Initially, the edit will appear identical to an overwrite, since the new clip will completely obscure the original clip. To resize and position the clip, click on it in the canvas to select it, and then choose the Image plus Wireframe option from the View pop-up menu just above the canvas. This overlays a bounding box with adjustment controls onto the video. By dragging the corners of the wireframe, you can resize the video, revealing the clip or clips beneath it. And once resized, you can click and drag anywhere in the center of the clip to reposition it. Position the mouse over the edge of the wireframe, then click and drag to rotate the clip. While this is a quick and easy way to position a clip, the motion tab of the viewer gives you much greater control and the ability to animate the changes you make. Double click the clip either in the canvas or timeline, to load it into the viewer. Click over to the Motion tab. The Motion tab provides access to the translation properties of a clip, along with the means to crop, distort, fade, retime, and add a drop shadow. You can adjust any of these parameters either by moving the control widgets, or by entering specific values into the numeric entry fields. Click the Disclosure Triangles to reveal any hidden parameters. Animating any of these parameters is simple. First, position the playhead at the frame you want the animation to start. Click the Insert Delete Keyframe button for the parameter you want to animate. If it's positioned, you'll be animating the center parameter. This locks in the current state of the parameter and activates automatic keyframe generation. Now. Move the playhead further down the timeline. Adjust the parameter either in the Motion tab or using the bounding box controls in the viewer. This automatically sets another keyframe. If you now play back your timeline, you'll see that the video clip animates between the two keyframes you've created. You can add as many keyframes as you like, and the clip will move between each of them in turn. Keyframes can be easily viewed and edited right from within the timeline. To enable this, click the Toggle Clip Keyframes button at the lower left of the interface. You'll now see the motion bar, a solid line below your clip with diamonds representing any motion keyframes you've set. You can change the time of these keyframes simply by dragging them up and down the timeline. Below this is a dedicated keyframe editor. Right click in the empty space below the motion bar and choose a parameter to animate from the listed categories. Drag the bar that appears to make a global change to the parameter, or option click on the bar to add a keyframe at a specific time. If you need more room, position your mouse over the left edge of the keyframe editor in the timeline and drag upwards. Once you've added keyframes, Control click or right click on them and choose Smooth to create a graceful Bezier path through them. Or choose Clear to delete a keyframe entirely. Cropping is an important process when creating split screen and picture in picture effects. Often, artifacts will appear at the edges of video that aren't usually visible when it's displayed full screen. These become apparent when the video is scaled down and need to be cropped out. Just drag the left, right, top, and bottom sliders to crop out a desired percentage of the clip. This is non-destructive, so you can always come back and readjust at a later time. Any of the clips in the timeline can be modified in this fashion simply by double-clicking them in the canvas or in the timeline. And if you want to finesse the animation and effects, you can send them to Motion, and the settings and keyframes you've established in Final Cut Pro's Motion tab will be available to edit there. 
If a clip needs to be sped up or slowed down, the process can be performed in the Time Remap section of the Motion tab. Simply changing the speed percentage will adjust the speed of playback. For example, a setting of 50% will produce a clip half the speed, and consequently, twice as long. If you want to vary the speed of the clip, commonly referred to as ramping, you can set keyframes in the Motion tab or use the Intuitive Time Remap tool. Click and hold the mouse down over the Slip tool in the Tool Palette and select the third option, the Time Remap tool. If it's not currently active, click the Toggle Clip Keyframes button at the lower left of the interface to get visual feedback of the changes you're about to perform. Now, click down and drag the mouse left and right at the moment in the clip where you want the speed to change. Dragging left will slow down playback to the left of that position and speed it up to the right. Dragging to the right will, of course, produce the opposite result. Along with the yellow adjustment tooltip, the vertical strokes at the base of the track help you gauge the speed change. The closer together the strokes, the faster the playback. You can repeat this click and drag process to create additional speed change keyframes for more stylistic ramping effects. If you look carefully at some of the frames created by this retiming, you'll notice some ghosted steps of the image in the clip. That's because Final Cut Pro uses frame blending to create retimed frames. Frame blending works well for retiming in most cases, but with extreme speed changes, the stepping effect becomes noticeable. In the Motion tutorials, you'll see how to send these clips to motion and use its advanced optical flow technology to create new, unique frames without this blending artifact.